Hi everybody, Sam from Road Trail Run. Today we're gonna look at the Brooks Ghost 15 and we're gonna also do A-B test against the 14. So the Ghost is a, a daily trainer uh, with a high drop. It has a 12 millimeter drop. It's one of Brooks's most popular shoes um, as sort of your all around daily trainer. I've gotta say that the 14 for me was a kind of a disappointment overly soft, overly roomy, just kind of a comfortable slipper more than a running shoe really. But of course, we all have our own thoughts about it. So in terms of the stack height, we've got 35 millimeters at the heel, 23 millimeters at the forefoot. In terms of weight, this is an US 8.5, 9.63 ounces, 274 grams. So identical in stack height and weight to the 14. And I would say the upper is almost identical. However, and we'll show you this on the run, uh, the 15 kind of dials in the upper, gets uh, more kind of uh, appropriate for regular uh, width feet. There is wide available, whereas the 14 was way roomy, very sloppy, I found. This, this pair actually was half size up from my normal, but even so, um, I think it was just too roomy. So they've dialed in the upper. You can still get the wide, of course, uh, if you need the extra room. So just walking around, I am um, uh, very much pleased with that. Uh, it is pretty much a totally identical shoe to the 14 in terms of the upper, in terms of the stack height, and even the midsole. Just a few small changes to the midsole here. However, we do get a new midsole foam in the 15 as we get DNA Loft V2, whereas over in the 14, we had DNA Loft. Now, DNA Loft V2 is not the supercritical V3 we find, for example, in the Glycerin or the Caldera tra Trail Shoe. It's the same foam that's in the really excellent Cascadia 16. So Brooks says it's soft. They don't say softer, they say soft and lighter. Um, just walking around, it feels a touch firmer than the 14's loft, which I think will be a good thing. So um, it will be out in uh, oct the end of October. Uh, you can pre-order it now. Um, and what I'm gonna do now is take them out uh, side by side, one on each foot with the 14, stay tuned for that, and then cover uh, some uh, a few uh, comparisons. And in brief shoes that this might compare to, the sort of your higher drop, flexible daily trainer around 10 ounces would be uh, the older Ride 13 from Saucony, the Cumulus 24 from Asics, uh, maybe the Pegasus 39 from Nike, um, not the newest version, which is softer and higher stack of the 880 from uh, New Bounce, maybe one of the older versions, I guess that would be the, the 11, and maybe the Wave Rider 26 from Mizuno, also high drop. So stay tuned, I'm gonna take them out for a run, the comparison, and we'll see you from the coast of New Hampshire. Least spectacular day for a fall run along the coast of New Hampshire. Okay, moving along the coast. And here's what I'm feeling. Clearly the new version, the 15, much more dialed in upper. Front, middle, back, whereas our 14, almost sloppy. Um, it is a half size up, but this is my wider foot. This is my true to size eight and a half. But here we're just swimming around quite a bit more. Most noticeable toe box and uh, midfoot. Uh, Let's talk a few first impressions about the ride as I move along here along the coast. The uh, 14 is a bit softer, a bit bouncier, almost mushy in comparison to the 15, which is has quite a bit more snap. Uh, maybe there's some firmer uh, rubber in front, but I think the V2 foam is just more resilient quicker to rebound. Nothing like real, real fresh pavement here. Very smooth. Makes things really tell what's going on underfoot. So moving along about 920 pace and got to stop for the geese. Turns out the guy with the sign lives across the way and he actually owns 
part of this pond so he can put his sign wherever he wants. Done the run and we're at beautiful Jenison Cable Beach here. First transatlantic cable came ashore uh, down past those people uh, in the 1870s. So let's talk about a bit more about fit and ride here. Um, I suspected that uh, my half size up um, uh, 14 uh, versus 15, the 14 is really voluminous and not as secure. They really dialed things to, in here uh, to make this really a comfortable but secure upper, whereas over here it wasn't very secure. It was kind of sloppy midfoot, uh, front, and even heel. Yes, it's a half size up, but this is my wider foot and it is clearly just too too darn roomy, really. Uh, whereas here we got a great lockdown. So uh, if you were uh, on the wider side, if you have a wider foot and the regular work just about right for you, um, when you go to the 15, you might consider trying their wide. This is by no means a skinny fit, but it is definitely more uh, a little narrower, you can see, than uh, the 14 was. Um, I think also the laces here hold better because I noticed I, they haven't really, didn't adjust them. Whereas over here, I think they slipped, stretched. So all in all, a really fine daily training upper. This one you'll be able to handle speed work, tempo. Whereas over here, it was really borderline. So let's talk about so the, the 15 ride. 15 has a ride that I would say is much more worthy of the earlier ghosts than the 14 as what you call a daily trainer. So good for just about any kind of running, including speed work. So in comparison, what I found was the foam now is a little snappier in feel, quicker rebounding, a teeny touch firmer. It feels a teeny touch firmer, uh, especially at the forefoot where you really now have a snappy, snappy toe, out, toe off. And you'll see here, uh, the flex is different now these are these are new one run but generally um uh i can get a pretty good idea of flex after one run now look at this you can see it has a forward flex point whereas our number 14 has a longer flex point softer longer flex point and that was really felt on the run snappy um whereas over here kind of a more mellow toe off um so you've got kind of a, a performance upgrade, if you will. I call it a performance upgrade to the Ghost, back to kind of its roots as a performance-oriented trainer. Uh, the rubber might be a bit firmer contributing to the snap. Not really sure, but certainly... Loft V2 foam. ...has quicker rebound, if a bit firmer. Um, it com it The shoe that it, it feels a lot like now is the old Ride 13 from Saucony, which had big bars of firm rubber up front. Here you can see, not super, super firm, but a similar design. The, um, the latest uh, Ride uh, 15 has gone higher stack, kind of a different, a little bit different feel. So you got this snappy feel off the front here, which I'm really, really liking. Um, in terms of other comparisons, the 880 from New Balance, the older versions, not the latest, which I think is the 12. Um, that shoe, the 12, got quite a bit softer, higher stack. This reminds me more of that earlier 880, say the, the 10 or the 11, but with kind of a, a more rebounding, a bit softer foam. Another one, of course, people may ask about is the Pegasus 39. Considerably stiffer feeling forefoot. Uh, a little bit less cushion up front um, in the Pegasus 39. If you're thinking of a Pegasus, go with the uh, Trail, the Pegasus Trail number four. Excellent road shoe with softer foam. Um, let's see, any others we might consider here? How about the um, A6 Cumulus 24? That was a shoe that sort of mimicked our, um, our, our 14 here with a kind of soft, mellow, uh, more mellow ride it, it, in its latest version. Um, and here we have a similar kind of stack height and cushion, um, a, maybe a touch firmer, a touch more responsive, um, maybe a touch more stable too. So uh, that's another one to look at. So 
our ghost 15 is 140 dollars 35 millimeter heel 23 millimeter forefoot so relatively thin forefoot um, plenty of cushioning but not deep deep uh, you know as many shoes are getting closer to 28 or even 30 so it's sort of the daily training classic 12 millimeter drop shoe um, it will be uh, it's available for pre-order at Brooks now and it will deliver towards the end of October we're gonna have a full multi-tester review of the ghost 15 in written form on road trail run real soon have a great run and a great day.